So one little hiccup in our trip. Near one of the exits, I had to make a last minute turn and I ended up going through a couple of debris. I think I ran over a nail at that point, which is why I noticed that our tire pressure was a little low. It's not too low, but it definitely is a little bit lower. Right now it's at 51, 50, 45, 51. So I'm not sure if I want to take out the nail and plug it or if I want to just leave it and then keep driving. Right now it's at 45, so it is a touch low. I may fill up the tire with some air and see what happens. But yeah, it does suck. There's definitely a nail in the tire. And here is the nail. That thing is in good. Now, mind you, I'm 6'3". I don't think I'm the weakest man. I mean, look at, look at these pythons. Look at, look at these things. But this is hard AF. Lightweight. I don't know how. Because I've never done it before. So I wasn't sure. I didn't want to risk it. But now I'm doing it for you guys so you can kind of see. This is legit generic organic material here. So I'm scared I'm not gonna be able to do it. Luckily the tire sermon is like right there. So what is up guys? It's Chris with Everett Chris and welcome back to my channel. So I do have a Vegas Zion Utah road trip coming up, so stay tuned for that. However, I just wanted to make this quick video because something happened on our trip on the way to Zion. I'm not entirely sure where it happened. I think it's when I was trying to exit a freeway really quickly and there was some wood there. I'm almost positive that's where it was. But I got a nail in my tire in Utah and I wasn't sure if I was gonna make it because I was afraid that if I kept driving, the nail would just fly off and the tire would pop or something crazy. However, I wasn't losing that much tire pressure, but I noticed that it was definitely lower than the other tires when I checked. Yep, of course there was a nail. So today's video is gonna be about the tire plug kit that I always recommend everyone purchasing because it's good to have in an emergency if you do have a flat tire or a leak. I always recommend having a tire plug kit as well as slime in the car for those emergencies. Um, some people are asking, why don't you just fill it with sealant? Of course I can do that. However, it does have a maximum miles that you can drive the tire on. And for Tesla's tire sealant, it's only 50 miles per hour. And we were all the way in Utah. There's no way I'm gonna be able to make it. However, for me personally, I've never used a tire plug kit. I mean, I've seen a ton of videos on it. So I didn't wanna risk taking it out. Also, when I was looking online, there's certain areas where the tire is not repairable, such as the shoulder of the tire, which is like on the side near the sidewall. The center of the tire, you're okay. Now, one more thing to note is that if the tire that you're driving on rips, or if it's showing any metal, that's not gonna be pluggable or repairable at all, and you're gonna have to get that towed. Because that actually happened to us on another road trip with our old car. The tire shredded. We had to just get towed to the nearest tow center, and it was, it was horrible. So the nail is the best case scenario. Now I looked it up and there was a tire center in St. George, Utah. However, it was Sunday, which is the biggest issue. Everything's closed on Sundays. Yeah, so now in Utah, they had something called Prairie Day, which is why nothing was open. So I don't know what I would have done. Luckily the nail stuck and I was able to make it home. I just kept my eye on the tire pressure the whole time, making sure it didn't drop too much. Uh, but we just got lucky. I could have waited, I could have tried using the tire center at Costco or some local area. However, again, it's not repairable, which means they're not gonna fix the tire. They can't even patch it. And I don't know how much or what the issue would be if, if I tried getting, apparently there's like a shortage of Michelin tires right now. So I don't know what I would have done. So when I was in Utah, I checked the Tesla service center, checked the app for roadside assistance, and it is free and it's included, thank goodness. However, they would just tow me to the nearest service center, which is three hours away in Vegas. So I knew that was an option also because we had a ton of people and so much luggages and stuff. Based on the forums, they don't even try to repair it. They just try to sell you a new tire. And one of my tires costs over $300, which is a lot. Again, I got my tires from America's Tires. They're brand new. Only 3,000 miles on them, beautiful Mission Pilot Sport AS4s. I did purchase the tire warranty and thank goodness I did purchase it because when I talked to the tire guy, he told me that that's not repairable and you would need a brand new tire. However, because I had the warranty, they're just gonna give me a new one. But if I didn't have the warranty, let's say if I got my tires from Costco or something, 
they would probably prorate the tire because I would have to purchase a brand new one. So if you don't know Teslas and a lot of EV cars these days do not come with the spare tire to save on weight. Online on the forums, there are people out there who actually have a full spare size tire in their car and they keep it with them. However, it doesn't seem very practical, especially if you're on a road trip and you're carrying a lot of cargo because it takes up a lot of space and you can't put it like underneath the trunk like most cars. Now, one important thing to know is if it's in the front of your tires, it's a lot easier because you can easily rotate your tires, have a better area to work with. However, my biggest fear is what happens if it's in the rear tire? And of course, sure enough, it was in the rear tire. So there's a teeny tiny window and a small opportunity of space that you can use to your advantage. However, I'm gonna see how difficult it is. I am gonna be doing this in the parking lot at the tire shop. So just in case it doesn't work out, I mean, it's right there. But anyways, let's go ahead and get to plugging the tire. So when I looked online, a lot of the videos show them actually removing the tire. However, it's not really practical. I can't remove the tire to plug it in an emergency. Another thing is after they plug it, they try spraying it with soapy water to see if it's leaking. And again, in an ideal situation, that's not possible. I don't have soapy water with me 24 seven. So we're gonna see what happens. So this is the annoying part. You just have to constantly check to see if it's in a good spot. So right now it's still, I moved up barely and it's right there. So I gotta come forward a little more. And stop. Here in my trunk, I have the tire repair kit. I'm gonna be needing these two things. So this one, this loop, as well as this. I have a towel I'm just gonna lay down so it's not hurting as much. Okay, so I'm just gonna prepare this in advance. Just put some lube in here so it's easier to go in and out. I'm gonna take one of these super sticky tar-like things. This is what we're gonna be using. And then we're just gonna put it, I guess this is an annoying part. Like, how do you put it in? That's what she said. And then with the pliers, I'm gonna try to grab it from the other end and pull it through. Okay, I think I got it. Well, wow, that was annoying. Holy, it's so sticky. So you wanna try to get this in the middle. That's what you want. Okay, so I think the hardest part which is kind of funny, was putting this in here. I had to use the pliers to really wedge it in, but it's now in. I'm probably gonna put a little bit more lube on it. The next step we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pliers and remove the nail. Then we're gonna take this and plunge it back and forth. And then we're gonna put this in and then it should be done. It's normal to lose some air. So I'm just gonna remove this nail and then put this in as quickly as I can. Oof. So now it's it. Okay, so that is the nail that was in my tire. It's a pretty small nail, which is probably why the air didn't leak out as quickly as um, as another nail. It's, and if you have a screw, like a spiral screws, then you're really screwed. So now this part, I have to kind of get over here and I just push it in. So I'm not sure, again, I've never done this before. I don't know if I'm supposed to go in all the way, but I'm twisting. There we go. So I'm twisting. I think they made it like this so you can twist it. So you just kind of twist back and forth. Okay, so now that's in. Now I'm gonna take this one. I'm just gonna be placing this into there, okay? This is another hard part because I have to put jam it in as far. I have to make sure this black thing is inside of the tire. It's not going in. I'm gonna bring it back out. Okay. There we go. So this is what I was worried about. Uh, because it's on the shoulder, I'm not sure if it's not, it's a lot harder to patch because it's not in the center. However, now that I took the nail out, it's kind of like taking something out of a wound. 
it's just gonna start bleeding and now it's just bleeding air. And I'm trying my hardest, but I can't seem to get the plug kit inside of the tire. I got the nail in no problem, or this, I got this thing in no problem, went all the way in. However, for some reason, I can't get this piece in. And that's the issue, because now the air is just gonna constantly leak. So I'm gonna keep trying and see if I could push it in. Maybe I'm just not pushing it with enough force. Because I know in order to plug it, you have to make sure that's in. So I'm gonna try pushing it more because right now it's not even going in. So I need to try ow, real hard. Put a little bit more elbow grease in there. Now mind you, I'm 6'3". I don't think I'm the weakest man. I mean, look at, look at these pythons. Look at, look at these things. But this is hard AF. Lightweight. Okay. Like, I don't know if it's the angle. Maybe can I smush it in this way? Can I try? You wanna try? Maybe my wife can have some of that mommy adrenaline. Look at me, I'm sweating like crazy. And she could try, so let's switch. She is just pushing and nothing is happening. So I am dripping. So I'm gonna try a different method. I'm gonna try lubing this thing because this thing is super sticky. So I'm not sure if that's why. So if you guys don't know, lube makes it less sticky. That's what lube does. So I just got a new one. The other one looked like it was getting all messed up and damaged anyways. Okay, here we go. I think I got it. It definitely glides better because it's all lubed up. So I'm gonna try just making sure it's all lubed. See, I knew, because I've never done it before, so I wasn't sure, I didn't want to risk it. But now I'm doing it for you guys so you can kind of see. This is the first time, it's not like I've done it before. And this is legit, generic, organic material here. So I'm scared I'm not gonna be able to do it. Luckily the tire sternum is like right there. So, I mean, I did it in the best case scenario, but again, it's on the rear tire I don't have a lot of leverage, so I tried lubing the metal piece. That didn't work, it didn't go in. So now I'm trying to lube the entire thing, the black piece as well as the metal piece. And we're gonna see if it goes in a little easier. And a lot of Teslas here. Like I said with Teslas, because it's a heavier car, I have a tire video on that, but the tires do wear out quicker, which is why you want something like America's Tires, which has a good warranty, so if there's any other uneven wear or anything they take care of it for you as long as you like do your tire rotations on time and stuff like that i'm going to replace this okay i'm gonna try it again oh yeah now another thing that may be the fact is maybe there's too much air in the tire so because there's so much air, it's pushing the, this thing out. So I'm fighting against that. Another thing I can do is potentially ask one of the workers here that's been helping me out and see if he knows uh, the better way to do it. Because right now I'm trying to do it and it doesn't seem like... <sighs> I put a ton of lube in too. Ugh. Yeah, it's whenever I push in, it just pushes back out. And I don't know why it's doing that. So I wanted to see if maybe it's not getting plugged because there's too much air. However, a quick Google search says to not let all the air out because you need that air to kind of create a seal for it. Ugh. Because I'm pushing as hard as I can and nothing's happening. It's like pushing back out. Whew. So now I don't know what, I'm, what to do. Oh, okay, so you need that body weight. Yeah, you need body weight. Need Dude, it's so much force. Yeah. They make it so easy in the videos. They do make it easy in the videos. Bastards. So when you try yourself, like, oh, yeah, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> everything, everything you watch on YouTube looks easy. Yeah. You do it. yeah. See, that's why I wanted to do that video. What was your name? Bro. Bro? <laughs> Am I doing something wrong? I can't get it in. Oh, so back and forth. Oh, I think you got it. Yeah. Oh, he got it. Hey, 
Oh, so you used your body weight yeah, and you just, just back push, and forth. Yeah, just try to get it in. So you know, more effort. One full effort just... And then I just I cut the rest. Easy. Yeah, you just cut it. Get okay. Razor. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. So you can hold it back. You just you push it in. Just okay. Like Man, you're not. I was like, dude, I work out, go to the gym and everything, and freaking <laughs> useless. That's about technique. Yeah. Okay. Technique. You can be as buff as you want. You don't know the technique. It doesn't do nothing. Yeah. So then, <laughs> yeah, if, if the nail was like here, what would I have done? The nail, if it was there, you're fine because it's, it's just a slow leap. Yeah. You can just drive on it. Just oh, air just it drive up. it. Okay. Just okay. Air it up. Okay. Even even right here, just drive it, air it up. Really. Okay. Okay. So the chance of the nail coming out was very small once you're driving it? It's very slim unless it's a a short nail. Uh Uh-huh. You had a long nail, so it's going to sit in there for a while. Okay, okay. If it's a short one, it will fall off and it will lose air fast. All right, so i super sweaty. I couldn't do it myself, so I talked to someone at America's Tires. Yuri and Ro, they're awesome on Orange and Chapman. Go check them out if you're ever in the OC area. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. So he said I wasn't doing anything wrong. You just need to use more leverage and you just need to use your body weight because it's a super hard hole to get in. They make it so easy on YouTube. All they do is take it out and just pull it, push it in. However, it's way harder than that. So a couple of things I learned from the tire guy himself. If it's a medium size or small nail, leave it in the tire and just drive because the chances of it falling out are very small. So it's safer to just drive it to a tire center and then get it fixed that way. So for me, he said this is actually a medium sized nail, which is why it didn't come out because it's a medium sized nail. But he said with the small nails, you want to be careful because because it's so small, it could easily just pop right off and you'll see a rapid decrease in your tire pressure and that's how you know. And I asked him, can I plug it no matter where it's at? And he said, yes, as long as it's not on the sidewall, you can easily plug it. And because it was on this outer edge, he said that I don't have to be so low. So what he did, and I was watching him, I'm, I'm sure we got the footage of that, was he just used his body weight and he just kept pushing in and out and in and out multiple times and eventually it went in. So that's why, like, don't you don't need to go to the gym and do <laughs> do bicep curls. It just needs your body weight, and you just need a good technique, and that's the technique. Again, like I said, this is in an emergency. He even said, if you've never done this before, be very careful of doing it because you don't want to be stranded somewhere. But if I have no air in my tires and I'm stranded, I gotta get it done. Before I was at this weird angle, so I was kind of pushing up. I also asked him, what would I have done if the nail was in the rear, in the middle of the tire? And he said that part, like nothing you can do about it. You could try the technique that I tried, but if not, you just have to get it towed because it's impossible because you don't have that leverage. You don't have that technique and that body weight. But overall, if you want to take a look here, it is patched. So then what you do is you get like a razor blade and you just kind of cut this excess left over. However, if you can't cut it, you just leave it. So here's the blade right here. And then I'm just going to cut the leftover. Now that's step one. Now we have to check the tire pressure and we're going to add more air. You can use Tesla's tire pressure system, but you have to be driving to get an accurate reading, which is impossible if you have a flat tire. So I always have a backup just in case. I'll link it in the description below. I just got on Amazon. So for the front, I'm getting 45. So for the rears, I'm getting 27.5. So all I'm gonna do is just use my Tesla tire inflator or any tire inflator. Make sure you have a tire inflator. There's a cigarette outlet in the back, so it makes it easy. Now again, this top part is the sealant, and it says do not exceed 50 miles per hour. If I had to, and I was local, I could use the sealant on top. This is the sealant, and you just have to switch it here, turn it on, and the sealant comes out and fills the tire with like a foam. However, for me, I'm just putting on air. So I have it on air, and I do this. Again, they do sell these again on the Tesla website. I think it was back ordered for a long time at least a year. It does give you an, a rudimentary PSI reading on here. So if you don't have one, it does help. So I'm gonna go ahead and juice it up all the way to 45. Okay, that should be good. 42, that's fine. Now, like I said before, I don't have soapy water to test it to see if it's leaking. But if you're at home, you just wanna spray this area with soap and then with soapy water. And if you see bubbles coming out, that means the leak is still there. Now again, real quick, a couple things I learned. All these muscles, this all show, no go. So use your body weight. I thought it wasn't going in because there was too much air. However, you do need air in your tire in order to create that seal with the plug. So make sure you don't let the air out. So when I started, my tire pressure was at 45. However, when I checked it, it was at 27. So I don't know if it's recommended to decrease the tire pressure by about half, 
That way it makes it a little bit easier. So I don't know if that helped. However, if you're having issues and you still can't get the plug in, try decreasing the tire pressure a little bit more. Now I'm at America's Tires and they already have a tire for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed. Hope this video helped you guys. I am sweaty, smelly, and tired. Again, this is a last resort and you wanna do this in an emergency. We had to nail in our tire since Utah and we drove all the way back to LA, which is about 400, 500 miles and we didn't have any issues. The air does decrease when I wasn't driving it when I was just parked, so I just have to fill it up with air. Let me know in the comments below if this has ever happened to you guys and what you guys did about it. Again, I thought it would be super easy based on the YouTube videos, but as you can see, it was not easy at all. I didn't think you could do it at an angle here because it's on the rear. However, if you can get an angle here, he just kind of went in this diagonal this way and he was able to get it in. It doesn't have to go straight in. I didn't know that either. It doesn't have to be straight in. It could be at a diagonal as long as it goes in. Just got done with the installation. It only took 30 minutes to do the installation as well as the tire rotation. I will say one thing, because they replaced the tire with a new tire, you have to get another warranty for that specific tire and he told me it's $48. Small price to pay just in case this ever happens again. Rather than getting a brand new tire and paying 300 something dollars, you just have to pay 48 bucks. So I thought it would be included under the initial warranty. However, it makes sense that because you used the warranty for that tire, you have to kind of replace the warranty. So I do have to pay $48. So it's not an entirely free replacement. However, it's still the best deal around and it's still amazing. And I'm just, I'm super happy. So thank you America's Tires in Orange. All right guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.